great friend of mine, Gabriel, he started a startup called Medingo. He said, I am Tesla Harlem startup, so I'm just going to send a robot and click pretty much everywhere a bit smarter than that, and it's going to test. One year and a half later, we sold it for 5 million to data them. Lacoste, when it first started, is still paying today 20 engines on full time just to click on their website to see if it works. It's so hard and it costs a lot of money. Even in Gentry, Python languages. You can't do front if you don't know a list of bit of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and fill out five if you can't type TypeScript. And when developers don't like front end, it has this kind of negative connotation that, yeah, it's for news, well, which I don't agree because it's actually harder. But then you get hiring is, gets more difficult. And back to the first stage, I mean, hiring is difficult. And lastly, it's harder to improve. Like, what doesn't go wrong? You've got to A-B test, you've got to track precisely what your users do. It's really hard. Backend, however, has a lot of uh, benefits. You can actually restrict the languages you use. Personally, we only use JavaScript and PHP, and I think that's going to be it for the next five years. Thanks to God bless Docker, you can have only one deployment, and that works pretty much everywhere. Thanks to AWS, you have one infrastructure. Easy, simple, always the same thing. Moreover, you can focus on value. Changing a button from red to blue is not what's going to build the new Facebook. You can focus on data transfer and data aggregation. Build the right API. Build what's bringing value to your company. Moreover, we've got a lot of frameworks and good practices for you. We've got, even if you want to build an API, I would suggest you look at um, Loopback, which basically makes everything for you. And that means you can literally focus on your business case. Focus on what makes your company unique and what brings what your company makes to bring value. We're going to look at two different examples. First, obviously, Stockley. That's what I do. <laughs> so, Stockley, we're the global inventory for retail. What do we do? We connect the stocks of every e retailer to mutualize data and reduce the average stocks. Let's say you have two e commerce websites, A and B. And A doesn't, they sell the same shoe, and A doesn't have it anymore, like it happens most of the time in retail. Approximately 40% of the stock in commerce is actually out of stock. So they have out of stocks. This, we sell, sell the product, they transfer the order, we transfer it to B, B send it directly to the consumer. Great business. First, there's the API. Stockly, we have the synch uh, synchronized stocks in the global inventory. I can actually, I will only focus on the plugins. For big retailers, I can do custom plugins and still no front end. For smaller retailers, I can give them SDK and still no front end. And for even people who are using frameworks as Magento, you can still give them a Magento plugin, always back end. The last one, which is the funniest one, <coughs> is the scraper plugin. Since it's actually long to sign people, we tend, when they don't answer that fast, we tend to scrape them to know their stocks. So we needed a management system to handle their stocks and their orders as if they were in the system, which obviously they didn't. That's why we interfaced with HiveDrive. We could have built our own front, our own dashboard, but that's a waste of time. I wanted a management system. There are multiple ones. I was using Hydra because I was knowing the API, but I only had to integrate through the API. I don't have to code all the nice little things, can drag and drop, all things that take time, it does not bring value. What's bring value is to know the stocks. Which means we could focus on lots of different points. For example, documentation. We focus a lot on documentation. Also, we could have built a website to have all our documentation and read it. Again, not a point. Use Notion. All documentation is marked down, directly imported to Notion. Then for back office, high drive, and front end, that's a retail's job. That's not mine. I outsource all the costly development to other people. 
I'm gonna look at the another use case, which is, as it may, artificial intelligence for radiologists. Great friends of mine. Basically what they do is they tell when there's a radio, they tell you pretty precisely when there's nothing. And that's 90% of the radios. But still, there's nothing it costs a few minutes to radiologists. So, they had two solutions. First, you could build an add-in on existing software, which has great advantages and <coughs> kind of defaults. First, they could, could focus on the technology, work more on the uh, artificial intelligence. But they had kind of legal problems sending the images from locally to their servers. France kind of hard. And then the integration would be quite tricky, is you have to integrate with those big corporations that do radiologist software. So I think they could have done is a new software that you go to the front end. And it's actually hard to sell to customers because, well, you're literally asking them to change their habits, and that's one of the hardest things to do. But they have better defensibility and they have more control on what that technology did. Why choose one when well, my whole speech would be about the first one and or choose the second one? Well, in that case, they actually choose the second one. And I had actually a really interesting uh, discussion about these guys, with these guys about why did they choose the second one? Because I, I, I saw no great advantages. Well, because their core value is usage. Their core value is to make radiologists win time. They have a great AI, but it takes five different buttons to click to use it. The radiologist is, you, loses more time using the interface than using the AI and actually doing his talk. The core value is their usage. If your core value is usage, then you should focus on front end and how do people use your software. And maybe you don't want to build this company if you don't like front end. But, sorry. Lastly, I have a fun fact. What if we were 10 years ago? I actually could have done exactly the same speech, taking two different examples as Critio and Riot Games. Critio literally had little to no front for the first three years. They literally just focused on the technology of matching what people saw on websites and what ad you should send. <coughs> Riot Games, guys literally didn't know how to code. They were gamers. They still were going to launch a game. And they were actually quite famous for being the most bug game ever in history. Still, people thought as it, it's mechanics. Amazing stuff. And right now, they've been, well, not right not anymore this year, thanks to Fortnite, but they've been, for a few years, the most played game in the world. So in short, if you want to remember two things about my speech, first, focus on core value, and second, dodge or hack content. Thank you very much.